everything happened so fast. Put powder in the test and he came sit right next to me. And he shaked it and it turned purple. And he says to me, heroin. The only thing that went through my mind is that they're going to kill me. I was excited, I was happy, I couldn't believe I made it to the semi-finals of Miss South Africa. So for me, everything was just going well. I had a clothing store with my boyfriend then in Carlton Center. He had this friend that would come sell him to the store, but I started looking at him because the way he dressed. So he started speaking to us and saying, no, he get his material in Bangkok in Thailand. And that's how I ended up in Thailand. When I was there, Jackson, that was my boyfriend's friend, he contacted me and he asked me if I could bring some engineering books from his brother in Thailand. I said, not a problem, tell your brother to bring the books. His brother came, brought the books, it was A4 hardcover engineering books, four of them. I just paged through one and didn't interest me, put it right back in the bag. The day that I had returned back to South Africa, they had a random check at the airport. As they were going through my luggage and just when it got to this engineering books, he took one of them and he just put a small pocket knife in the spine of the book. And then when powder came out and they just whisked me away immediately and he showed me a poster and on the poster it was written heroin death sentence. So when I saw that, I don't even know how to put it in words and, and they came back and they just handcuffed me put me in a minivan with about seven to eight police officers, not knowing where I was going, not knowing what's going to happen to me because nobody explained anything to me. When I went to court, I did not know that I was sentenced. So when I came back, that lady that does the translation, when she came back and she told me that you got sentenced, you received a death sentence that was commuted to life. I can't even explain like how I, how I felt at that time, but I felt like you're going to die. That's what they're actually telling me, that you're going to die. There was one lady, she was an American lady. This lady, when she would be asking people like, how are you, how are you feeling? When somebody asks her how she, she will tell you, I'm blessed and I'm victorious and how are you? And I'm thinking, woman, you are not normal because this is not a place where I want to be. And for me to tell you that I'm blessed, I don't feel any of that. But you know, this lady, she started coming to me and she started talking to me. And when she started sharing Jesus with me and I said to her, this Jesus, is he gonna take me home? That's the only thing I wanna know. So she said to me, no, he will do more than that. He will keep you in a safe place no matter what happened. I said, and I prayed this prayer with everything that was inside of me. I was desperate. And I said, amen. This is the reason why I'm sitting here today. When my friend and her husband came to come and take my daughter and she was telling everybody in Thai, Chan Pai Africa Thai, I'm going to South Africa. Just 15 minutes before the visit and my daughter looked at the prison guard and she looked at me and she told the prison guard, Chan Mai Pai Africa Thai Leo, I'm not going to South Africa anymore. And I looked at her and I said to her, why Tamai? And she said to me, Mai Pai Leo, you got me. I'm not going, I want to be with my mother. I was standing there and the only thing I could say was, Jesus, help me. Because I didn't know how to I tell a three-year-old child that she needed to go. And for me, in that 15 minutes time, God did a miracle for me. Because there's no other way something in 15 minutes can happen the way my daughter's heart was changed when she looked up to me and turned to me and said to me, okay, Chan Pai Africa Thai, but Metong Ma Leo, I will go to South Africa, but you must come soon. After five years in prison, I wanted to submit my Royal King's pardon application. So I got documents from my family, from my friends, writing to the King of Thailand to ask for leniency and mercy on my behalf. After three years, I received an answer back from the King of Thailand. So by then, I was already eight years in prison. And when she said to me, the King is rejecting your pardon. It was like lights went out. It's like strength 
left me. I was so disappointed. I could not believe that my pardon was not granted. And then I started getting so angry and so upset. I felt so sorry for myself. And I could hardly speak because I was so exhausted, hyperventilating the whole time. My mind was running 24 seven. I couldn't control my mind and that scared me. And this lady came and she looked at me and she said to me, Vanessa, you're laying here giving up on life. You forgot what you promised your daughter. You promised her that you're coming home and you're laying here and you're giving up. Depression turned me into a vegetable. And as I went on my knees and I just cried and I said, Lord, please forgive me for doubting. And what came to me in my spirit is that you trusted in men and not in me. Your confidence was in the people, the high profile people that written on your behalf to the king of Thailand. And you were so confident that you will get your pardon because of the people that wrote on your behalf, Vanessa. So when I started making a decision to forgive, my healing started to break forth. I didn't realize that anger, hatred, unforgiveness can destroy a person. It nearly killed me. And as I came out of the hospital, the, the king gave amnesty to the whole of Thailand, meaning that on his birthday, on the 1st of December, that you get a reduction in your sentence. I came and I said, Lord, I would like to have an amnesty. I would like to go home, but let your will be done. And I had my peace and I left it there. I had a release date on the 30th of October 2010, one day before my daughter turned 16. And the day when I walked out of those gates and I was in the plane back to South Africa, for me, I could not believe it, that I'm on my way home. And when I asked the air hostess, how far am I from South Africa? And she said, two hours. I went again, I asked her, how far am I? And she said, one and a half hour. And I went back to the air hostess, I asked her, how far am I? And when she said, and half an hour, I felt like I was going to have an anxiety attack. I started hyperventilating and I, I taught myself how to control my breathing. So I just started praying and then I just controlled my breathing and I calmed down. But when that plane landed on South Africa soil, I cried because I made it home alive. It was a challenge for me. It wasn't easy when I returned back to South Africa. But I thought my work in prison was done when I left prison that I have to start with secular work and I have to find a job. But when God told me the prison was your training ground, now you're gonna walk in your ministry.